In today's video, we're going to be getting a little bit interesting with things, I would say, compared to what we typically do. We're going to be talking about kind of the severe weather season we've had so far and an upcoming change that I expect over the coming week or two uh, that could shift things big time as far as how this tornado season especially has gone so far. Now, it's important to note that we have two main tornado alleys, and that's the classic tornado alley throughout Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. We see this one in the red here on the left. I'll point it out here if you can't tell uh, right there. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to, but just in case. And then we have our Dixie Alley for portions of eastern Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, portions of Arkansas and Tennessee are involved as well. Uh, Georgia, and even extending into the Carolinas, there's a Carolina alley. Um, it's much obviously more minor than these two. But I would say that, you know, in some cases it does extend off of this Dixie alley um, if it can slide underneath the Appalachian Mountains. But anyway, uh, you get the point. There's two main alleys. And what's interesting is over the past 20 or so years, maybe even more, uh, we've seen a significant shift towards this Dixie alley being a lot more prominent and the Tornado Alley, the classic one, actually uh, dying off a little bit. And why I say a little bit is because there's still typically more tornadoes in the normal Tornado Alley, the classic Tornado Alley, than the Dixie Alley. It's just, that, it's just that this one's been on the decrease and this one's been on the increase over that time. So they're drawing closer and closer to one another. Um, now, let's talk about actually how previous seasons have gone with this Dixie Alley being the really really at the forefront of a lot of our tornado outbreaks and how this season has gone so far. So we're going to start out by taking a look at 2022 which was a very active season and we're going to compare that to 2024 because I think 2022 at least the location of a lot of this was pretty on par with what we've seen a lot of in the past 20 years. Again activity was a bit higher um, however I think the location gives a good idea of what we've been seeing. We can see that a lot of these tornado reports are in the red, and they were across these areas in Texas still, but then Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, we saw a lot in there. Of course, you still have some over Iowa, some over Kansas here, but it's just a much, much more uh, concentrated amount, and this is just for March of 2022. Once we move into April, we see a lot of the same. We do, of course, like I mentioned earlier, still see tornadoes across all of these plains and classic tornado alley states like Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. However, there's just a large concentration here across these deeper south areas in that Dixie Alley. Uh, and same story for May, although we see uh, quite a bit of it backing off finally from the Dixie Alley and transitioning finally over to that classic alley. And typically this does actually happen this way. Uh, we'll see earlier in the season, and sometimes it's even January or February, we see these deep south Dixie Alley outbreaks. And then as we reach towards later in April and into May, we see it shift further westward. That does happen sometimes. But let's take a look here at 2024. Here's March, and it was actually quiet um, compared to a lot of years. We saw a couple of tornadoes here in this Dixie Alley. I would say a handful for sure, about six probably or seven in there. Um, but there was also a large concentration across this classic alley, even starting in March. As we move towards April here, what we see is that there was, again, some Dixie Alley tornadoes, but look at the classic tornado alley here. We had a highly above average April this year for the classic tornado alley. States like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, into Iowa and Missouri saw so many tornadoes in the month of April. Uh, highly, highly above average for those areas. And then May has really carried on very similarly. Uh, we see a lot of Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, and Nebraska seeing a lot of these tornadoes, and then the Dixie Alley seeing a few, but again, just a receded amount. Now, that kind of brings me into why I'm talking about all of this, right? So clearly, 2024 has been a bit of an outlier out of the past, you know, 20 or so years where the Dixie Alley has really been at the forefront, as I mentioned, and the Classic Alley has kind of quieted down. We've seen a very classic tornado season this year as opposed to those recent years, where we see states like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska you know, Missouri, uh, seeing the forefront of that tornado season like we saw 30, 40, 50 years ago, uh, oftentimes. So it's been a very classic tornado season. However, I do expect in the upcoming pattern, and we're just going to shift right in here to our model guidance uh, to see a big shift here in the Dixie Alley area. I feel like we're going to see back-to-back -back systems move through and be pretty favorable for this area. And it's pretty early to tell if this is going to be significant tornado events or if there's just going to be 
you know, primarily severe weather focus in this area, but maybe not as intense. Uh, that is still unknown, but I do know that a lot of our activity will be shifting to this area. So let's talk about it. Um, and by this afternoon, what we see is a lot of storms up and down the southeast coast, all the way up into portions of the, the northeast even. So up and down this east coast area, we're seeing some thunderstorm activity. As we move towards Saturday on the 11th, tomorrow from the time of making this video, we do see some activity starting out here for areas in the four corner states in western Texas. It's originating there, and we see some showers and thunderstorms perhaps over the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and interior northeastern states. As we move towards Sunday afternoon, we see this system is on the move, 1001 over New Mexico and Texas, 1005 up there in Iowa, and certainly could be some severe weather here um, for areas across the plains with this system. Definitely cannot be ruled out. But by Monday, what we see happening is this system is really skipping over these areas. The low is already over Kansas and Oklahoma. And we see a lot of the stronger storms over this Dixie Alley area, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida Panhandle starting to get these, uh, Tennessee. And by the way, uh, yesterday and today, we've seen a lot of bad storms in these more eastern areas. So we've already kind of taken that leap. We've taken that shift. I know there was a nasty squall line down there in the panhandle of Florida. I saw some images of that. It looked absolutely insane. So we're starting to see some of this activity pick up in these areas. And look at Tuesday, the 14th here. We have a low over the Mississippi River right here in between Arkansas and Tennessee. We see bad thunderstorms underneath. Again, not really known how severe this could be. It could be pretty mild or it could be pretty bad. Um, but the, the main focus here is that the activity is shifting to this area and what it does, you know, what that potential looks like <clears throat> is something that can't be answered yet. Obviously, looking back, that is what will be important. But for now, all we can say is that the activity is shifting to this area. Wednesday, we see this system is on, uh, basically on the coast of North Carolina there, bringing some thunderstorms and showers to these areas. And then we're seeing the plains here starting to pick back up with some storms as this system is moving through. Um, but really, we see a lot of this energy because we see a low in between Louisiana and Texas here. These areas are all north of the low. So I'm expecting some thunderstorms and showers in here, obviously. But I think the worst of the thunderstorms is going to be around this low or to the south of it. So... A lot of this activity is coming from Gulf moisture out to the east of that low. Could certainly be some bad thunderstorms along this area in between Thursday and Friday there. And by Friday afternoon, this is looking pretty classic. 1003 over Missouri. A lot of Gulf moisture and energy moving up into these states, the Gulf states basically here. And could be some elevated thunderstorms in this area. We do have a 988 over South Dakota, but it looks pretty low precipitation as of now. We do begin to see that pick up as we move into Saturday, though, with a nasty looking cold front could bring about some pretty intense severe weather for Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, perhaps here. So it's a strong, strong low up there. Also, our 1003 here over the Ohio Valley is still bringing thunderstorms here to the mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley. Definitely very, very interesting. We see that move offshore, actually, and bring about a nor'easter uh, to the east coast. I will say this European model has been wanting to show a nor'easter for so long, and it just hasn't really happened it's been pushed back so i'm at least you guys can do what you want but i'm going to take this with a grain of salt uh, i feel like this model has been trying to show nor'easters occur uh without seeing it really prevail this is probably the third or fourth one i've seen over the past few weeks and i don't really know how many of them have even been coastal lows uh they definitely haven't been as impactful as they look in the long range so definitely taking it with a grain of salt myself Let's go ahead and take a look at the total precipitation, and this really shows the full story. Look at where a lot of that above average precipitation is. Right in that Dixie Alley, we can tell there's going to be a lot of storms moving through this area over the next 10 days, and I'm certainly going to be on high alert to see if we get any severe weather events throughout there. The plains do see some activity, so I don't want to act like it's completely shutting down there. It's just a little bit less than what we've been seeing, and even up and down the east coast, we've seen quite a bit of activity on the uptick here on this particular model line. Snowfall is also on the uptick, believe it or not, as the Cascades are now expected to get a few inches. Rockies are looking a little bit more consistent with the total snowfall, and we may have to wait a little bit longer for this to be said and done than I originally anticipated. Temperature pattern, we're going to see a lot of flips here, so let's see. We get cooled down by this afternoon into this evening uh, as we see a big warm-up across a lot of the west here, and this is going to really force cold air uh, into these eastern counterparts, so that is what is occurring here. We're going to wait and see when that west area cools off, and it's going to probably be 
mid to late next week. So we see by Thursday on the 16th, we have colder air trending in for the West. And that's right when you start to see this warmth prevailing in the East and Central states. Definitely very, very interesting. It stays that way for quite a while. It looks like we're going to move straight into a negative PNA pattern through perhaps the end of May as we still have it by May 25th. And you still have a lot of warmth trending in, especially for the central states. It looks like there is some cooler or more neutral air for the east, um, but shouldn't be too bad. By late May, this is going to be still very, very warm to even hot. So I'm not too worried about that whatsoever. Now, the Storm Prediction Center outlooks for the next three days are a little underwhelming. We do have a slight risk today for the Carolinas there in South Carolina and North Carolina. We have three marginal risk areas, one for the Carolinas, one for Wisconsin and Minnesota, and one for Florida here. And then we have four general thunderstorm risk areas, one for the four corner states and some surrounding states, one for the Sierra Nevada, which is interesting, one for the upper Midwest here, and uh, yeah, basically the upper Midwest, and then one for the Southeast, where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heed every watch, warning, and advisory as always. Uh, day two here, which will be for tomorrow on Saturday the 11th, we have three general thunderstorm risk areas, one for Southern Florida, one for the Ohio Valley, and one for the Southwest again. Um, and then we have a little marginal risk there for Texas out there in far western Texas, where we do expect some isolated severe weather to be possible. And then day three, uh, we have two general thunderstorm risk areas, one for Montana and then one for a lot of the central states here of the United States. And then we have one marginal risk area for a little bit of Kansas, a little bit of Oklahoma, and then a swath of Texas there, as you can see. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We do upload every single day. So be sure to subscribe for daily weather uploads just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.